according to your righteous will. I ask you by your might and by your power to help us all learn how to be when it comes to the things that are concerning you to be serious and to be adults in our judgment. Because if we're not gonna be adults in our judgment, then we don't even deserve to lead the world. We don't deserve to lift up your holy name like we're supposed to lift it up because what we'll end up being are people so far away from what you are that we will not represent you at all. I ask you to help us in the blessed name of the Holy, your Holy Child, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. And even so, amen. Anyone that's on the Zoom, tell me if you can see me. I just need to know if you can see me. If you can't see me, then that's fine. But I just need to know because no. I, okay, because I, I heard a sign, I heard a sound come through my computer. Now I can. Yeah, I heard a sign come through the computer and I don't know what was going on. But let's go ahead and go into our message tonight. Our message tonight is going to be one that was prompted by some people that were talking to me and some things that were going on. And really what it boils down to is should people I see what's going on. Give me a second. I keep seeing that my my uh, camera is going down. I don't know why it is. Your screen is sharing now. Yeah, it is, but uh, but it's it's as if the uh, Mevo is acting up. Can you see the? Can you see my log off? Hello. Yeah. I oh. Yes, I don't see your picture though. Okay, so we may just have to do without the picture altogether. I look the same whether you can see it on the camera or not. Uh, what I'll do is I'll switch it over in a, in a little bit when I get to talk. So let me know when we get ready to go into the discussion when I can open back up the camera. Is that fair? Okay, now what we, okay, I got words misspelled wrong, but I'm, I got it up here. I'll have to change it on the on the Zoom. The question was, should, should people fleece y'all's people and we go along with their teachings? when Yah has condemned their wickedness. Let me say it like this. Should we go along with people that fleece the flock of the most high God and because other people like it and because it may hurt somebody's feeling, should we go along with the fleecing of God's people through the teaching of the tithe and through the teaching of telling people that the devourer is gonna come and get you? Should we go along with that and let people be oppressed, depressed, and feel guilty about something that somebody has said that's not going according to God's will. Let's just go ahead and take the bull by the horns. This is a teaching that has been taught by John Evanzini. It's been taught by Kenneth Copeland multiple times, Kenneth Hagen, and the people that they call God's generals. And now we got down to where we see another, another time Creflo has come up, Creflo A. Dollar Jr., and say that he is apolog. No, no, no. He said he was not apologizing for what he taught. So let's see what God's word, what's his narrative on people fleecing the flock? So now let's go and look in the Bible because some people will say, Tim, you're not supposed to judge. Really? Let's look at what the Bible says, because most of the time people talk and need to keep their mouth shut. They don't have enough of God's word to be telling the truth. And since they're talking, often they will be contradicting the most high God. And that's a damnable place to be in. So let's look at Jude 3. Let's start with Jude 3. Jude only has one chapter. So when I say Jude 3, it says beloved. Or beloved for those that like to say it that way. When I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. That word contend, let's click on it. So let's go ahead and start doing some work. That word contend, I'm going to let you hear it from my computer. You probably can't hear that apagonism. I got a, I got the ability to make the sound come up so that somebody can hear and they might like the, the pronunciation of the computer than me. Listen. Apagonism. Could you hear that better? I think that you could. Apagonism, what that means is to struggle and to fight. 
It doesn't mean to lay passive. It doesn't mean to try to be neutral. Being neutral when it comes to the things of God is a God damnable lie. It is wicked to be neutral when it comes to these things. Tim, you made a mighty strong statement there. Well, I'm just repeating the master. What did the master say about people trying to be neutral? He says in Matthew, Matthew, the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, he that is not with me, whatever the Messiah has said about an issue, whatever the Messiah gives as the narrative of the most high God, since he is the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he is at the right hand of the Father. Not only is he making intercession for us, but he is ruling and reigning, and he has given his spirit for us to continually spread his kingdom. So he says, he that is not with me is against me. You don't have an opinion. You don't judge, and yet the Messiah has judged. The Father has judged. You are against him. Then he says, he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. If that's not clear enough, if you don't understand it better, let's look at Romans 3 and 3 so that we can really get our minds set to do God's work. The brother of Jesus, Jude or Yehuda, he says, earnestly contend for the faith. If you don't want to contend and fight and struggle for the faith, you want to be neutral, you don't want to have nothing to say, then you're against the Messiah. He said so. You're not gathering with him, gathering truth and protecting the sheep with him. Then what you have done, you are scattering. That's what the Bible says. And Paul says, and the issue he's talking about is the history of the world. In chapter one, he's talking about the difference in the Gentiles and the Jew in chapter two. And in chapter three of Romans, he's going to talk about the people that had God's righteous laws. And he says, out of all of what the Most High God has said, and it proven to the people in the first chapter in the 20th verse, that the invisible things of him, including his eternal power and Godhead, are seen through the things which we see. Okay, now. He said, but what if some did not believe? If you don't believe Messiah, when he say, if you don't gather, you scatter. If you're not with me, you're against me. If some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Will it change anything? He says, God forbid. Let God, let Yah be true and every man a liar. I'm saying these things about what these men have taught. And if these men have not changed, I'm not saying apologize. The Bible never tells you to apologize. Never. The Bible tells an individual to, I'll just show you. It says, God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar. That includes me. That includes any of your celebrity, big time preachers like love. Because I ain't on the same page. I'm on the page with the word of God. Let God be true and every man a liar, as it is written that thou might be justified in thy sayest sayings and might as overcome when thou art judged. Do we really, really want to understand what God has said? Let's deal with the people right quick that say that you ain't supposed to judge because that's another God damnable lie. Because you, when you judge me for judging, you are judging. And if you really believe that you're not supposed to judge, shut your mouth. I mean, seriously, because other than that, you're going to be willfully disobeying God because you're trying to correct me. But I'm trying to correct in the minds of people that have lost homes, that have lost families, that have lost cars, that have lost jobs, that have gone through and didn't have money to pay for that food because somebody said, put this tithe in or pay this extra anyway. I'm going to show you what the Bible says. In John chapter 7, verse 24, the Messiah is speaking. Jesus the Christ Yeshua HaMashiach, judge not according to appearance, but judge, but judge. Somebody say, but it say judge righteous judgment. Well, let, let me show you the, what it's called, the morphology. Let me show you how this word is, the verb. The verb is present, do it presently, actively, and there's an imperative. You see that? I guess I'll click on it because since I'm speaking about something, somebody might say I'm wrong imperative. It is the mood that normally expresses a command, intention, exhortation, or polite request. 
the imperative mood is therefore not an expression of reality, but of po possibility and volition. The point is, it goes through the different ways that commands are used, context, he's saying judge righteous judgment. And don't please don't tell me Matthew 7 and 1 say don't judge, because if you do, I'm going to realize that you haven't grown up in the word and you're listening to other people give you God's narrative. The narrative of the most high God, it says this, judge not that you be not judged. He's not through talking. You see a period right there, right? You think they put a period there when it was written? And you think they had a number two? No, this was a letter where, some, where Matthew was writing the sermon. So when he says, judge not that you be not judged, he said, for what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And what measure you meet or you put out, it shall be measured to you again. Why would you fear that if you're judging righteously? You should fear that if you're lying on somebody. You should be fearing the judgment that you judge when you stand up and you tell people and they've taken their money, they've taken their rent, they've lost family members. And I've got a friend I talked to just yesterday that told me the reason why he and his wife got a divorce is because his wife was taking all of this money and writing in his checkbook and giving money to the church, paying all this extra, and he couldn't afford to do that because he's running a business, and she told him the ultimatum. Either I do this, or you can go ahead and divorce me now. Splitting homes. You have no idea the churches that I visited when I saw people doing the shut-in, when I would visit churches in Atlanta, and I heard the woman that was supposed to be a prophetess pastor Tell the people, don't trust God. Take your rent money and give your rent money to the Lord tonight. I've seen it in many times. What judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And notice, why are you beholding the mote in your brother's eye and consider if not the beam in your own eye? Tell somebody going to judge you for what you say. Great, judge me righteously. Judge me righteously. It says, how will you say to your brother, let me pull the moat, the small thing out of your eye, and behold, a beam, a big thing is in your own, your own eye. He said, thou hypocrite, first, get the beam out of your own eye. Black people, you say, get your, and I won't say what it is together, but get your life together. Get your heart together. Get your rightness with God right. First, cast the beam out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly, notice, you will see clearly how to judge. You will see clearly how to cast or to remove the mote out of your brother's eye. Got it? Let's go down. We, same chapter. Roll down to verse number 15, because I want to prove. Jesus says, after he teaches them that, teaches them how to treat one another, teaches them how the Holy Spirit can be given. He says, beware. There it is again. Verb, present, active, imperative, command. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing. That don't mean they got wool on. They are clothed with words. They are clothed with sentences. They're clothed with phrases. Some, they like to say, glory to God. Glory to God, and then come back and say all that glory to God teaching that I was giving you about the tithe. Yes, Creflo did it, was wrong. How was it glory to God then? Is it was it glory to God then, or is it glory to God now? Because at that time when you taught it, it affected people's lives, their livelihoods. Maybe they were going to go on a vacation. Maybe they put something else aside. I used to see people write money cometh, money cometh, because Leroy Thompson would go into church and say, I got this, I got the black, got the black phone, titanium credit card, and right on your chair, money cometh. And then he run across the stage and dance in the money. My wife and I went to a place, the Creflo preached, he it wasn't even a great sermon, and they go up there just throwing money on the dog on stage, on the steps. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them. You shall know them. You shall know epikinosco. When you go get your car, you want a diagnosis. You want to get to know what's wrong with it. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? 
we're going to learn God's word or you will continue to be fleeced or you continue to be the kind of people that the most High cannot use to do his will. Why is that? Because you have your mind made up. You're going to do things your way. And when you do things your way, you're going to allow anyone to lead you and guide you in the way they want you to be. And the most High is not, not only going to, not going to be pleased with you, but I will submit to you, you put yourself in the position that you're so far outside of God's word that you'll be going along with somebody that's doing wrong. And what's the problem with that? Let me show you. Romans 1, 32. Paul says, and he gives a whole list in first, I mean, in Romans, the first chapter, but he ends up talking about those. Let's get the context. He talked about people being without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. The Greek word is a story you don't really care for your own family. Implacable, you cannot be pleased and unmerciful. Then he says, who knowing the judgment of God and they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. I submit to you, there are many people in this world that when they listen to people teach and they teach this wickedness, they go along with it. They have pleasure in it. They clap their hands. They jump up and down for joy. And they start even throwing more money into the pan. I submit to you that Jesus has a term for these kind of people. And the term that he has is the term that I'm going to use. Let me open up this right here. And I'm going to take you and show you some more of the sweet word of God. Come on over here. Let me slide it. Because for some reason, my uh, software started trying to act up. But I'm not playing with my software. I, I know what to do with it when it acts up, and I thank the Lord for that. So what I want us to do, I want us to look at what the Most High talks about certain kind of people. I want us to remember what we're talking about. We're talking about Yahweh's people getting fleeced. Are we supposed to go along with it when Yah is condemned that kind of thing? Or are we supposed to do differently? And some of us, we act as if no matter what they do is acceptable. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 34. I'll give you a second to get there. Ezekiel chapter 34. When you get to Ezekiel chapter 34, I'm going to pretend like you're with me. All right. Ezekiel chapter 34, the Bible says, and the word of Yahweh came to me saying, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. I thought we were supposed to judge one another. I thought we weren't supposed to say anything to anybody. He's telling Ezekiel the prophet, I want you to prophesy against the pastors or the shepherd of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord. This is what God says, thus saith the Lord, go unto the shepherds. Woe be the, to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Those that get fat, nasty, and wealthy off of you. Because they're supposed to be protected. You go to the shepherds of Israel or Israel. Israel means that you are a Tsar with El. Tsar is a prince. El is God. They're supposed to be princes with God. They do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? So look at Jesus' talk. Jesus talks about the same kind of people. So, and so did you understand? Because you didn't read out the Old Testament. And I was told that we're not under the law, but we are under grace, which is a God damnable lie. God is never without law. He's the judge of all of the earth. If there's no more law, he can't be judged. There cannot be a judgment day when he judged the quick and the dead at his appearing in kingdom. It cannot be a judgment day when he sees, when they come and they gather around him and he sits on the throne and he, judge the, he judges the dead at that time and they all be, be, appear before him, the small and great, and the books will be open and another book is open, which is the book of life and the dead are judged according to the things which are done in their body. He is judge of all the earth, but that's not the issue. He says they feed themselves, should they not, should the shepherds not feed the flock? What did Jesus say about these kind of people? He says, I'm the good shepherd. You want to know what a good pastor is? I'm the good shepherd. Look at me for the model. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. 
but he that is a hireling, a hired worker, a day laborer, a person that needs to come and get and want to get his money and move. He that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not. See if the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep. How many pastors will not tell you that when they start talking about Roe versus Wade and they come together and they fist bump and they say they're against it, how many of them will tell you black people that that law was made based on a black man, a black man, a woman accused a black man of raping her again, just like that Susan woman did in South Carolina and just like many of our ancestors was hung and these are the crying words that get you killed. We call them Karens now. And they say that this woman said she was raped by a black man and couldn't have or to get an abortion and they made a law because they want to continually be able to put you all to death as well as wealthy white women they could always get abortions and you cheer you have pleasure in the wrong that they do and now we're talking about a shepherd uh, they're supposed to be a shepherd he's a hireling and he says and not the shepherd whose sheep he sees the wolf coming and he leaves the sheep and fleeth and the wolf scatters them. So whatever the laws of this land happen to be, whatever our culture is, whatever somebody comes into the assembly and teach you that's wrong, he doesn't care as long as he gets paid. Why is that? It's because there's a thing called meritorious manumission. Meritorious manumission was in Virginia after the days of Nat Turner's rebellion. If a black man knew somebody was going to rebel and they were going to have a rebellion and he told it, they said they would set him free, manumit him. If they knew that, or if they saw the house was being burned down and they saved the house, they could be made free. If you saved the life of your master, you could be made free. If you did and you, and you did like what the master wanted you to do and you pleased the master, he could manumit you. So how do they do that today? Well, maybe you will sing songs that call black women whores and everything like that. And, and you teach people to tell them to go shoot up each other and you get manumitted. Or maybe you can go and get naked and slide down on the pole as a man and act like you're having sex with a man and you get to make money because they manumit you. But there's another manumission that was taking place. You see, after Nat Turner, it starts getting to the place where you got a law in the United States and different states picked it up. It was called anti-literacy laws. We don't want you teaching anymore. We don't want you preaching anymore because we've already given you a Bible without Exodus in it. We've given you a Bible with only a couple of chapters of Deuteronomy. I've shown you all the unholy slaves Bible before. And so what you do, we're going to teach you what to teach the people. And if you teach the people what we tell you to teach, we're going to let you, we're going to let you get paid. We're going to let you have the rights of a preacher. I will submit to you that the very thing that Creflo Dollar was preaching, he didn't start it. There's a, there's a group. Then you hear him say one time, well, they, they under Kenneth Copeland, they pay Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland found the tapes of Kenneth Hagin and he learned those and he started preaching it. Kenneth Hagin plagiarized a man by, um, what was his name? E.W. Kenyon, I own, I own the books way, and I put them side by side. I have a lot of those kind of people's books. Again, we get the same kind of teaching that I talked about on Sabbath. We get the teaching from the people that controlled us and oppressed us. And when we do that, we're so far outside the will of God that we don't know what God wants us to do. So what does he say? The hireling, he's getting paid. You get to be on their shows. You get to be big enough to have your own. But in the beginning, they let you in the circle, maybe with Jerry Savelle and with Jesse Duplantis, and they let you in with different people and they can come by and they can bring their books and fleece you and you can take your book and fleece them and the books are not that deep and they're not that powerful. I remember when the books used to be a dollar like that and I went and visited that church one time and you had to buy every one of those books and go through those books to get to be a preacher. This is before they built the dome. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about because you have a thermometer drawn on the wall and they had it when they were going to, I think it was when they're going to get to a million. And I never thought it would get there. And they would have, and each time it would go up till they got enough to build a dome. Yeah, they did. But he says, who's owned the sheep or not? See if the wolf coming. You see these people that have been lined up with this man coming. 
just like that man, John Evans, in his, he comes in there and he says, I, the Lord going to let me a loose to give the hundredfold blessing. You don't have a hundredfold blessing to give to a whole group of people. But you get to come in here in this whole neighborhood where all these black people live. They come in and have them thinking they're going to get rich. And you think they're going to have a, a, a room not big enough to receive it. Where's the room? Who bought the extra houses? Who bought the extra jets? How long will we simple ones love simplicity? He said, it sees the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. The wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. What does the Bible say when Jesus came to a place that all it was about money, money, money? I should have sung the song. The Bible says in John chapter 2, verse 13, let you see how Jesus feels about people allowing people to come in and fleece his people. You see, the people from Deuteronomy chapter 14, they would make a long journey instead of bringing all your sheep and cattle. You could get your money together, and then you could go where you wanted to go, and you could buy sheep oxen, strong drink, or whatever you was going to have for the Moedim or for the feast. And so at the first when we saw it, back in Exodus chapter 7 and 12, it was called Yahweh's Passover. Give it about 1,500 years, and now it's called the Jews' Passover. So it says the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found them in the temple that sold oxen, could I say books, pamphlets, CDs, cassettes, little trinkets, little holy water, all that kind of stuff they sell on TV, little fake angels. And, just like, and so oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money. In other words, you got money that's not used in this country. Well, in that case, you didn't have the temple money. And so what they would do, they would exchange the money from wherever you came from into the money for the temple. And they make money, extra money off of that. So he says, then the changes of money sitting and when he had made a scourge, you want to know what a scourge is? It's a whip. You want to hear the you want to hear the Greek word? Fragilion. Fragilion. Okay, it's a whip. And he made a scourge, a small cord or a whip, and he drove them out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changes money. Did this seem like the little Jesus that they painted when I showed you on Saturday at the American Colonization Society when they painted all of Jesus white? Does it seem like the same one that was in the American Sunday School uh, Association books that they put out? Does it seem like this is the same one that they did with Ralph Gurley when they did the uh, American tra uh, Bible Track Society? No! This is the powerful glory to glory. He said he overthrew that table. Imagine for those that don't see this in their mind. Imagine going up into a place where they're doing that. You're a man. You got a whip and you start swinging it at people. I'm not knowing if you're hitting them or not, but you if they stand there, they're getting hit. And then you knock over a grown man's table and his money and his money. He said he overthrew their tables and said unto them the soul doves. He coming in disturbing their business. And said unto them, this old dove, take these things hence. Make not my father's house the house of merchandise. Are you with the Messiah? Are you with your friends? Are you with what you invested and you paid all these tithes, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars? You got your income tax and they told you to pay a tithe. You want some money, you pay the day to pay a tithe, you owe it to us. And that's not true. But what does the Bible say about some of these kind of people you all love so much? See, back during the days when we were enslaved, everything we made, it was 100% taxed. I'm going to show you one day. Doc, uh, I don't know if it's Dr. Sean Rochester. I know he's an economist. Sean Rochester got a beautiful book, Talk About the Black Tax. But I want you to see, and Tim, why are you talking about black? Who did Jesus come to? Did he come to the whole world? No, he did not. You said, but I know he did. Okay, let's see if you're telling me the truth. John 1.10. Okay, John 1.10. 
He was, let's see, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. He came to his own first. You think I don't know what I'm talking about? You think I'm making it up as I go? Why would I have to do that when the Bible is explicit? The Bible says here in Matthew chapter 15 and 1, then came Jesus to the scribes and Pharisees, which were of the children of Jerusalem. Uh, Matthew, that's 14. I know it didn't sound right. Why do your disciples... I don't even want that. That's too long. Matthew 10 to give it to me quicker. Matthew 10. He called his disciples and gave them power of an unclean spirit to cast them out, all manner of sicknesses, to give you the names of them. And he let you know that Simon, Simon was a Canaanite and Judas is scared. They betrayed him. And look at what he did. He tells them, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't go up into Europe. Tell me where you get Europe from. I'm not going to look it up, but you can look it up. Genesis chapter 10, 1 through 5. Genesis chapter 10, 1 through 5. And any of the way of the Samaritans, any of you not, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I submit to you that the pattern of the Messiah is cleaning up home first. The pattern of Messiah is working with those that shared in his ethnicity first. It wasn't that he excluded anybody, but I'm going to my people first, my people that I have foreknown, my people I'm going to them first, and then I'm going to gather the other people. I submit to you, what good is it? Tell Mary, tell you about God word and in my house god word have no play what good is it for me to be talking to people all over the world on the internet but then when it comes to our people who are still being oppressed in america who are still being locked up look at look at what's going on under the new jim crow by michelle alexander's book and you don't address them why we never get to be addressed unless we're addressed in a whole group you don't get to tell me to do that i get to follow the messiah but you have made merchandise out of God's people. Let's look at Peter. Peter's a beautiful person to look at when you want to understand how God operates in the world. Second Peter chapter two, verse one, Jesus drove them out of the temple and he said, make not my father's house the house of merchandise. Make not my father's house where you got to buy all of these tapes and these CDs that you've already paid for and you pay for the equipment for it and you still got to buy this and you got to buy these books. And if I want to go and talk to you, pastor, I need to go look and let me go look and see if you tithe. If something happened and you lose a limb and maybe you want to sort of let me see if you tithe. Let me see if you're a heavy tither and maybe, maybe I can move some of the bodyguards around while we can talk to you because I'm going to elevate myself above the brethren, whereas in the 17th chapter of the book of K, I mean, uh, uh, Deuteronomy, he said, don't elevate yourself above the brethren. Peter says there were false prophets among the people. You don't like me saying what Creflo and these people said is a false prophet? He said it himself. He said, I've been doing it. It was wrong. I, I, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you hear him say he's a false prophet. Let me finish reading. But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresy. You ever hear me talk about a God damnable lie? Where do you, you think I get this word from? Will bring in damnable heresies, even denying Yah that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow them. And shall follow their pernicious. Do you want to know what the word pernicious is? Destructive ways, okay? By reason of whom the way truth, truth, the way of truth shall be evil spoken of is going to be twisted. Verse three, and they through covetousness, through greediness, shall with fame, the word here, plastos, so we get the word plastic fabricated, with fame words make what? Merchandise of you. They'll cheat you out of your money. Look at it. With feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. And he goes on to let you know, man, if he didn't spare angels, he ain't sparing them. But here's the problem. When we don't know the word of God, you'll argue with somebody to say that what they've been teaching was damnable heresy that was so wrong outside the will of God that you shouldn't have been following it anyway. I've been saying this stuff over 20 years, so this is not brand new for me, okay? 
But look at what the Bible says in 1 Timothy. Let's look at 1 Timothy. Let's start at chapter 6, verse 3, because he talks about different things that people were doing and brethren do them and talk about the one being faithful and you benefit the ones that have been a master to you, uh, that, you that had treated you right. But then he says, if any man teach otherwise, 1 Timothy 6 and 3, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of Yah, Messiah, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to holiness. Listen, if you teach something other than what God has said to teach, the Bible says he is proud knowing nothing. He said, this individual is proud. This individual is arrogant. This individual is, dece is deceived to be in a haze. This individual is puffed up. Here is the word. Let me let you hear it. Twofold. Twofold, the Greek word, the original language. He is puffed up and conceited. Now, it says, if he teaches otherwise, not knowing nothing, but doting about strife and words, where is coming in the strife, railings, evil surmising, per perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind, listen, and destitute. They are deprived of the truth, supposing that gain, supposing that gain is godliness. They've been teaching you that the tithe is the covenant. So in this seed, 20, so we're going to do Psalm 23, send $23. Psalm 68, 18, send in $68.18. I saw Jensen Franklin, they like, sent $300. You sent it to what? They're telling you that gain is godliness. Look, the perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind, destitute, destitute mean deprived of the truth, supposing they suppose that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. Why are we going to continue to be rebellious? Rebellion is equal to witchcraft. Stubbornness is equal to idolatry. He says, supposing the gain is godliness, from self which draw thyself, but godliness with contentment is of great gain. What do we value godliness? Anytime a man going to tell you that you're not going to be under the law, that's a goddamnable lie because the Bible said God's going to write his law in our heart and in our mind and we all shall know him from the least to the greatest. Hebrews 8 and 8, Hebrews 10 and 16. An individual that knows God according to John chapter 17, verse 3, this is life eternal. John 17 and 3, that they know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Romans 8 and 4 said, we are to fulfill the righteousness of the law. I had to start quoting some stuff because I understand time moves. It says, well, we brought nothing into this world. It is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be content. But they that will be rich, they'll fleece the sheep. They'll make merchandise of you. They'll make you feel bad about what you're doing. He said, they fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love, for the love of money, well, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. You know, when people covet money and they got a whole lot of it and they can say, I got five Rolls Royces, I got all of these houses and I got a titanium plastic, uh, I mean, a titanium credit card. I got an $18,000 dog house and you can do the same thing that Jim and Timmy fake, fake bakers did. And the people actually, instead of running away from them, they run to them. I remember when I was young, I actually hear this man on TV. His name was Robert Bout, um, Robert Tilton. I like a thousand dollar bow. And then they showed him on the news all those prayers that people said they were thrown out behind in the trash can. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But look at this, old man of God, flee these things, flee greed, flee ignorance, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith and love, patience, meekness. Now look, Fight the good fight of faith. Isn't that what Jude says? Contend for the faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called, and have professed a good profession 
before many witnesses. Tim, why are you harping? I'm harping because we need to know stuff. Now let me share this screen. I'm gonna sh share this screen and I'm gonna tell you now when I share this screen, what you get ready to see is not, this is what was said. These pictures were added. So when you see these pictures, don't think that all this was going on with the pictures. Those that know the man that I'm talking about, if you don't know the man, I want you to at least hear what the man says and compare it with what we've thus far seen in the scriptures, okay? Listen to what he says. Moving barns and uh, give everybody a little card. They stick it in a little computer slot. If they were tithing, beautiful music would go off and, you know, welcome, welcome, welcome to the world. Let me, let me see if I got it right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the world. See that? Shall I change my voice? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the This is what he says he wants. If you come in his church and you got a tithe, you are welcome. Hear it one more time. We're moving bars and uh, give everybody a little card. They stick it in a little computer slot. And if they were tithing, beautiful music would go off. And yeah, just slot. You know, welcome, welcome, welcome to the world. <laughs> But if they were non tithing the bar would lock up. That's the night. The red and blue lights would start going. The siren would go off, and a voice would go throughout the entire dome. Crook, 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 crook. Notice and you would go, and if they would call you a crook, call you a criminal, a criminal because you didn't give a tithe. Crook, 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 like an embarrassment. You in front of everybody. Do you not see that this is fleecing? Do you not see? What do you find that in the scriptures show that to be? And you and they happy and they laughing, they clapping. And these are our people, you all. How can we allow ourselves to continue to be meritoriously manumitted to do this to one another? How can we teach a gospel that was not the gospel of the Hebrew people, the Israelites of old? How is it that we're going to continue to teach a gospel or a gospel that will allow our oppressor to continually fleece us and to get money and you give a tithe to them so that you can maintain yourself in the circle? Go back to him. Let him talk. Oh, no. <laughs> but if they were non tithe bar would lock up that's the night the red and blue lights would start going the siren would go off and a voice would go throughout the entire dome crook 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 <laughs> security would go and apprehend them and once we got them all together we'd line them the security would come and arrest you now these pictures just be fair because i don't i didn't make this video he didn't have this video when this was being said but it fits the words, okay? Let's make sure. Don't be going to say, and Tim showed these pictures, and it did that, and that ain't what he showed. I know this. I know I heard it years ago. I can see it in my mind. Some people aren't that way. But it, 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 it's really nice, because the Bible says a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Um, and uh, once we got them all together, we'd line them up in the front and pass out Uzi by the ushers. We point our, our, our boozies right at all those non-tithing members because we want God to come to church. And at the count of three Jesuses, we shoot them all dead. And then we take them out the side door there, have a big hole, bury them, and go ahead and have church and have the anointing. about Juneteenth. It did not free you on June the 19th. You weren't free. You weren't free in the South. You definitely weren't free in the North. And then when they were about to make it free because they lost all that land, they wrote, they went and they made Jim Crow laws. They made vagrancy laws. And then they started locking us up and call it convict leasing and leasing us back out to the people as criminals because guess what? We need our money. What's the difference? And that what they did when they would arrest us 
us and lock us up and make us work for free because they wanted that money and we were getting away. And so now I want a way to make sure you all not getting away to give me money. I wish I had a thing I could, you could put your card in. If you don't tithe, it can say, crook, crook, crook. And then the ushers come and arrest you, apprehend you, line you up, and then give everybody oozes and shoot and kill you because you're no more good to us. In other words, like they used to have the Negro problem, you got the non tither pro a problem. And then, and then bury you in the ground, a hole in the back, bury you, and then we can go on and have the anointing. Let me let him say it one more time. I go back to my message. Uh, this man, this man, I told you. Got them all together. We line them up in the front and pass out oozies by the ushers. We point out us our oozies right at all those non tithing members because we want God to come to church. And at the count of three Jesuses, we shoot them all dead. And then we take them out the side door there, have a big hole, bury them, and go ahead and have church and have the anointing. Aren't you glad we're under the blood of Jesus? Because if we were not under the blood of Jesus, I would certainly try it. I would certainly try it. Say it again, Pastor Dollar. Because if we were not under the blood of Jesus, I would certainly try it. Folks, this is a serious thing. Folks, this is a serious thing. All right, um, I, 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 I'll give you that. Let me go back to my text. So when you see and when you hear me talking and I have this passion in my throat that you get to understand that when he, when I read this scripture here, when it says these individuals that suppose that gain is godliness, withdraw yourself. It says cause godliness with contentment is great gain. You, I don't know. I'll give you one more little taste if I got it on my computer because I have stuff it is like we don't even begin to understand how they make merchandise of us. We don't begin to understand that the things that they do, I'm not going to do that. But I have one where he's telling them that he didn't tell them he wanted money for a jet. And then I got the way to go through and he said, I asked for the money for the jet because I believe the Lord has told me that so-and-so and it's on there. But it's not the Creflo Dollar Show. It's do we support these men? Do we not warn God's people? Are we going to be the kind of people that always be so ignorant? And when it comes, we don't protect, we don't protect the sheep. We don't protect our people. And we allow things to go on in our house that ought not to be going on in our house. So let's go back and let's look at Ezekiel and see how Ezekiel was talking about these people. I hope this is giving you some insight because of the fact this thing been going on. It's not new, but in America, we get to be the ones on the bottom. Go look at this dude. He'll come on late at night, call Peter Pop off with a funny looking wig, and he'll be getting money out of, out of our people. We need to stop this mess, and let's go back to Yah. So he says, and the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say to them, thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, woe to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flock? You eat the fat, you clothe you with wool, you kill them that are fed, you feed not the flock. It says, the disease have you not strengthened, neither have you healed them that was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken, neither have you bought again that was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force and with cruelty you have ruled, ruled them. Here is the thing. God knows if he was talking about real healing, that ain't happening. You had all these tents with Benny Hinn blowing. <sighs> And you're supposed to be healed. You got all these people saying you're healed. You name it. You claim it. And you still die. And you set up all of these tents. And you took money from people. And you told them that the tithes would give them the healing that they want. You told them it would give them the prosperity. They would walk in, in what they call divine health. But when COVID came, COVID-19, you put a mask on your face. When COVID-19 came, you let your church inject our bodies with stuff that people are suffering from and many of our people are dead. But you don't go to the CDC and read how many died. Where was your miracle tent during COVID? Where was your Oshele Boko Shanta Boko and slap them and knock them down on the ground? Where was your speaking it and declaring it? Where? 
You have sold people a bill of goods over the years that have not worked. And when you did that, people died. The most high is watching. The most high is judging. You didn't warn the people of righteousness, sin, and judgment. That's what the Holy Spirit did. You taught them about money. Gain is money. And they would give money. And you learn the five step this and the three step this. And then you tell them it's a yoke breaking anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And you taught them in such a way. Then if they would get in touch with what you teach, they get the anointing. Now you're telling them that tear up their books of what I taught. How are you going to tell somebody to tear up the books that you taught and you're not refunding them? Wicked, nasty, ungodly. When Creflo Dollar said he would like to have three Jesus to shoot, that's a terroristic threat. It's the same thing like the Ku Klux Klan used to come around and they would terrorize you. You better not get your stank tail over there and vote for that Republican or that Reconstructionist. You better not. But you, but y'all love, y'all love it that way. He said, you haven't healed that which was broken. So let's talk about what's really supposed to be healed. Let me look at my time. Okay, Tim, you're on the tape about eight more minutes, so you got to speed it up, my brother. When you want to start talking about healing that was broken, it's not the money. It's not being fleeced. It's about what's wrong. Look at what the Bible says in Isaiah 1 and 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amaz, which you saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the day of Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, king of Judah. So if you don't know anything about Amaz, if you know anything about Ahaz or Hezekiah, you don't understand that's the time frame because the Bible is giving you that historical time when this happened and he's going to give you the narrative of what's going to happen. Then he says, hear, O heaven, give ear, O earth. If you know nothing about Deuteronomy, you don't understand God made covenant with his people before the earth. He did it and he said he had the earth as a witness, okay? It said, for Yahweh has spoken, I have nourished and brought up children. Look like, is somebody trying to join in? Okay, I'm seeing some of my thing. Okay, uh, somebody told me to slow down, and I will. It says, for the Lord has spoken and brought up children. I need to move my chat now. The Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. And they rebelled against me. The ox know his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel, they don't know. My people does not consider. If we knew, we wouldn't follow just any and everybody. He says, all sinful nation laden with iniquity. Notice sin, iniquity, evildoers, corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. Now notice he's going to stylize it, okay? When I say stylize, he's going to show you he's going to take their spiritual sin and he's going to put it in a way that you can really see it because obviously you weren't. He said they have forsaken the Lord, Yahweh. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger. They have gone away backwards. Why should you be stricken anymore? In other words, why should I have to bust you upside the head again? He said, you will revolt more and more. Notice with all of the sin going against the Lord. Look at it. Sin, iniquity, evil, corruption, forsaking the Lord. He says the whole head is sick. Faint. When it says faint, that means you have no strength from the sole of the head. To, I mean, from the sole of the foot to the head, there is no soundness. There are wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been clothed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. In other words, you haven't even softened the hard sores with ointment, nor bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country, your country is desolate. The shepherds did not heal that which was to be healed. And so for those, I'm going to give you this free, for those that don't understand, it's not about a tent. What it is about, it's about the Messiah. So what happens is since you didn't do it, he's going to do it himself. Look at what he talks about in Isaiah 53 when he talks about the servant of the Lord, the one we call Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. He's despised and rejected of man. He doesn't have a big tent. He doesn't have people throwing dollars at his feet. He's acquainted with grief. When you say grief, this is suffering, okay? And, it, and we, as it was, hid our faces from him. He is despised, and we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our grief. See, he, he had grief, he bears our grief. He's carried our sorrows. 
we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, not my cancer. It didn't say diabetes. It didn't say heart attack. It didn't say stroke, my obesity. It didn't say my ED, didn't say my PE. It didn't say her, her, whatever the equivalent is on the female side of my blindness. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you see that stripes? Let me show you something. That word, habura, let me see if I get, if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, help me, computer. Habura. Habura, by his stripes. Notice this is a noun, common, feminine, singular. It's singular. It, it shouldn't say by his stripes. It's by his stripe we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone his own way, and Yahweh have laid upon him the iniquity of us all. What's the big deal about that, Tim? Well, the big deal about that is when you go back to Ezekiel, it was as if the people, if they had been told the truth, if the shepherds had done their job, then the people could have been healed. But what they were doing in themselves, again, look, in, in Ezekiel 34, I'm reading part of four, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken. You have brought, you have brought again that which was driven, you didn't bring that again that was driven away. You didn't seek that which was lost. You dealt with cruelty, and now they were scattered because there was no shepherd and they became meat to all the beasts of the field. Why do you think when people leave, why do you think they go join Kemet? Why do you think they go join Islam, nation of Islam, Buddhism, atheism? He says, they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and he gives a little more and more. But because of the fact I'm looking at my time frame. I want you to go to the last one. I think this is the last. I got, I got to have two. I got to have two. First of all, these people were telling you that you were going to, that you're going to rebuke, rebuke the devourer. Let's look and see. And you're going to have a window so hard you can't receive it. I want to know how many of you all got a room so big that you got everything that you told you were going to get from this tithing. So in Deuteronomy chapter 18, God was saying he's going to send Messiah. He's going to send someone like him. This is why Christ is greater than Moses. Because Moses even told you the Lord is going to raise up a prophet out of the midst of you. He's going to be like to me, but you better hear him. Okay. And then let's move down in verse 18. It says, and I will raise him up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak all that I command him. And whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require, I will get him. This is why we put our emphasis on the Messiah. But look at what he said, but the prophet, which will presume to speak a word in my name, which is going to tell you you heal, knock you on the floor and go over the book, chante le boo -boo, whatever it is, or yabba dabba do, and tell you that if you pay this tithe, if you sow this seed, God going to do this for you. And your house is paid for, your bills is paid, your debts are paid. I got vid we have videos all over the world. You can find that. But the prophet, we shall presume to speak a word in my name and then come back seven years after he says it and said it, I was wrong. I talk wrong and go back and teach it again and then come back and say it again in the last few days. I was wrong and you go for that. The Bible says the prophet which shall presume to speak in my name that which I have not commanded him to speak or that will speak in the name of another God or prophet even that prophet shall die this is what God said are you mad with God do you disagree with God you say Tim but they all don't die you think we just because the person walking around they're alive Jesus told the man one time Come go and follow me. He said, well, first let me suffer. Suffer me to go bury my father. He said, you follow me and let the dead bury their dead. And he says, how will I know? How will I know if the word, how will we know if the word which the Lord has spoken when the prophet speaketh in the name of Yahweh? And if it does not follow nor come to pass the thing which the Lord has not spoken, that prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. And they were putting terror in the people. That the devourer going to come and do the boogaloo upside your head. Let's go ahead and finish this out because there's so much more 
that I that I can't get to. So let's go to the book of Malachi because this is where they use to the, the impel you to the, to the doggone tree while they got their hand in your pocket, your checkbook. Not only your checkbook, give your gold and silver. Got the old cars, be that, give a stock to bond, sign your house over to us. We can't get enough. Can you hear the preachers? Can't get enough. <laughs> of your tithes and stuff. Yeah, I know what y'all thought I was going to say. Okay, Malachi 1 and 1, it says, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, way, and if you loved us, was not Esau your brother, saith the Lord, and yet I love Jacob. Is it context? I hated Esau, and I laid his mountains and his heritage to waste. Let's move down for the sake of time. Okay, can we do that? Again, like he asked in Isaiah, verse six, a son honors his father and a servant his master. If I be a father, where's my honor? And if I be a master, where's my fear? Notice who Malachi is talking. That's the only reason I'm reading this here. Where's my fear, saith the Lord of hosts unto you priest. That, these are qualified priests that despise my name. And they won't know where you despise, okay? Yahweh says, where you offer, talking about the sacrifices, the tithes, Will you offer for sacrifice? Will you offer the blind for sacrifice? Is that not evil? And will you offer the lame and sick? Is that not evil? Offer to your governor. Will he be pleased with it? Accept that person. And he goes down and shows all the wickedness that they do. And this is where we get to Malachi chapter three, because I'm not going to read it all, because you all have heard it more, more times than I think than you should have out of context. So when they say, well, a man robbed God, you've robbed me with the blind animals. You robbed me with the wicked sacrifice. You did in tithes and offerings. And he said, you're cursed with a curse. And there was a man by the name of, they called him Pastor McNair. And we used to have Bible class with these people. And they said, Pastor McNair said, if you're not tithing, get out of the church. Get up out of this church. You're not bringing the church on all of us. That's what, that's what it said. You're cursed with the curse. You have, that's mine. You're cursed with the curse, and you have robbed me, even the whole nation. And then he told them, bring the tithes into his storehouse, that there may be meat in his house. And prove me herewith, saith the Lord, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you, the priest that was offering that stuff, a blessing that shall not be room to receive it. And will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Folk don't understand that in the book of Malachi, they don't understand during the time God was going to send Nebuchadnezzar. They don't understand God was going to send the Persian. They didn't understand he was going to send the Medes. He was going to send the Greeks. He was going to send the Romans. And they were going to come in and devour Israel. But we continually support. We continually walk along behind these people that don't know God's word. The Bible said that they are novices and we let them fleece Yah's people and we go along with their teaching when Yah has condemned them. So let's end with this, Proverbs 3.31. Envy not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. When people don't matter to you and things matter to you more than people, you can teach anything that you want to to them. You can treat them any way that you want to. And the most high God, he's watching. He knows our folly. He knows the things that we do. He knows why we do them. And when we do these stupid sure. things, we do these stupid things. What we do is we end up making Yah of non effect. We don't love him like we say we do. We love stuff. Can we stop it, you all? Can we stop it and get right with the most high God? Because of, we, sh we should be able to do that. We should be able to get so right with the most high God. I want to share, I'm going to let you see this last thing. I had it on my page and hopefully I can make it play. If I can make it play, let me share the screen because I don't want people that he's making up stuff about this. I don't care about, look, I don't care about who we are. I'm going to be dead, okay? I'm 60. I don't have 60 more years to go. I want to fight for y'all now. I want to fight for him now. I want him to be pleased with me now. So now let me open up. You have to say it. 
Thank you, precious love. Now, here we go. See if you can see. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, let's let this play. Go on. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the world. Home. This look like the one I already had. Uh, if they were none time, the bar would lock up since the night. The red and blue lights would start going to shine. I'm on the pass that we've covered that. I'm on the there. I'm on the pass that. I want to go. Okay. This is a serious thing. Folks, this is a serious thing. You better believe it's serious, serious to the point that the mouth of God spoke about it in his holy Bible. Each man should give account. Well, anyway, Creflo Dollar omits scriptures forbidden by Yahweh God. You take time to time to time correctly. It's impossible to go to hell. If you time correctly? Wait, hold, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold up, wait a minute. If you tithe correctly, did Jeff Bezos have nothing to worry about? Let him go ahead and throw one of his billions that he's going to probably lose one day this week and stop. It's way more than I'll ever have. He can't go. Tim, let him say it again. If you take time to time to time correctly, it's impossible to go to hell. Because you're doing all of that. And tithing will keep you in heaven. It'll keep you in the presence of God. I wonder if this woman got enough food to eat at home. Maybe she does. But look how happy she is to throw it up there. Preach, Creflo. Oh, let me go back and preach to him. We know that the tithe uh, is the agreement. We know the tithe, according to this, we're believing right now that the tithe is the covenant. That's a goddamnable lie. Let me make sure that's clear. The tithe has never been the covenant because the covenant is in the blood of the Christ. He is the mediator of the New Testament. And the other covenant was given in Deuteronomy chapter 24 when they killed the animal and Moses sprinkled the blood on the people and he sprinkled it on the, on the Ark of the Covenant in the furnishing. The tithe, this is a novice. Teaching this to our people. I was, I'm not saying he didn't teach it to anybody else, but to us, how long will they do us and treat us? The first person you want to get a shot to, the first person you want to test something on, the first person you want to bring that. The, Lord Jesus, let's just go back to him. Tim, shut your mouth. Say that again. Say that again. Come on and say it, Creflo. My heart heavy. I'm glad you're with me, Marshall. Uh, is the agreement. We know the tithe according to this. We're believing right now that the tithe is the covenant. I'm telling you that your tithe is your covenant connector. I'm telling you that all the promises that God ever gave you, you cannot get them without being connected to them with the tithe. I'm telling you, the only way you're going to get hooked up to healing is through the tithe. I'm telling you, the only way you're going to get hooked up to prosperity, deliverance, or any promise in the word of God is through the tithe. Wait a minute. Prosperity, deliverance, in other words, <laughs> any, if you're sick, if you're not well, if you're, if you're practicing fornication, if you're practicing adultery, homosexuality, bestiality, pedophilia, if you're greedy, you're stealing, you can't get deliverance to that unless you pay a tithe. And we're going to let this man teach us gain is godliness. The Bible says from such turn away. And, and I had somebody don't like what I say because I say he's wicked. He's wicked. He's wicked. We have him here and me here and the most high son right there. And you say, Lord, judge which one is lying to the people. I guarantee you, I'll get to go home. Really does the tithe is the covenant. The covenant connects with healing come through the tithe. Say some more. If you're in agreement with this man, you need to repent and fall in love with the truth of God's word. I didn't make this. I just picked it up. What you're about to see may shock you. Leroy Thompson, my, my, my money coming. Watch what they do. Watch this. I got to walk on this money. Woo! 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 Get some anointing. You put some up here. Woo! 
It is a meal today. It is a meal today. I don't know why they stole the ground. They should have left him in. I didn't make it. I can't tell you what he should have left him. Look at how ignorant our people are. And nobody cares. They up there being stupid. Because they seeking for stuff, man. Look, glory to God. Your bills are paid. Cause they put money up there. Now watch Creflo go up there and do his. They ran. Watch you go do the boogaloo. Now, I'll just stop right there. Here is the thing. When you got some people doing that kind of folly and they say it and it doesn't come to pass, that person is a false prophet. And I would to God if we if, if we were if we really were in charge of our own, like we should be, they should be put to death because they lead people astray. They lead people from the truth. And people that would go there, they will walk around in arrogance because we go to this big place and we somebody. They do the same thing in Gainesville. We somebody because we go to a big place. Well, let me tell you something. The temple was bigger than that that Solomon built. And many people went to hell because you know what? They fell in love with the edifice. They fell in love with the services, but they didn't fall in love with the most high. Well, I'm gonna pray. I appreciate you all's patience. You all have been, you all been so good to Tim. Uh, I'm gonna close this right here so that it don't start talking. Now I'm gonna pray most holy father. Train us to love you. Train us to love your word. Train us to walk with you in truth and sincerity. Train us to be men that are men, not just males, with an appendage in the front. Train us to be grown women, not just females that got breasts and can bear children, but to be mature that we can discern between good and evil, that we, by reason of use, can discern between good and evil, that we can make righteous judgments and set people aside and stop people from doing stuff, destroying homes, destroying families, causing people to be laid on bills because they think they're going to manipulate you with money because somebody it says it and when they come up and say i apologize but no no i'm not going to apologize i was wrong I, we was wrong about it lord they weren't wrong about it because they just want to change that because a lot of people coming and showing them up on it they're not repenting lord they're not making restitution they just want to keep a platform that's what their fruit show Help us to be discerning and keep their feet on the fire and keep our feet on the fire so that we don't get tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight and cunning and craftiness of men whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Amen, amen, and amen. Now I'm going to open, I'm going to open our class for discussion. I don't expect everybody to disagree with me, but if you disagree with me, if we got respect for one another, prove your point, lay your point out. And we can we can argue points. I'm not going to argue and tell you. I mean, you unless you really, 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 really at real stupid. I will argue the point. The point is to, to deal with this more than the person. Tim, Tim, did you say Creflo's going to hell? If he don't repent and change, where else would he go? How many people has been hurt? I mentioned tonight that there was a man that told me he lost a wife because of that. All right, you all, let's open up for discussion. Do we have any discussion tonight? Anybody on the conference line and on the um, Zoom and I'll check the Facebook. Anybody on the conference line, please speak up if you got something to add or take away. Can you hear me? I do. I would like for you to speak more to the point of the novice because sometimes novice for people will sound like they're just beginning but in something that's right as opposed to novice and just being wrong. Okay, I'll does try make, to, Does that make sense? 
up the doggone loop. Lee, I'm gonna try to do that within two minutes. Let's see. Let's. I'm gonna show you my first novice, Hebrews, Hebrews five and twelve. You know where I'm going. Five and twelve. It says, "For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles." The the word behind oracle is logion. That would be the words or the sayings would be the first oracles of God and have become such as need milk. That means you're a baby and have not, it's saying not strong meat for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. Now that's important to be, to, to not be unskillful in the word of righteousness. On the middle panel, I will show you what I mean by that. Romans 2. I don't want to. I want Romans 8 and I want 4. Romans 8 and 4, it'll give me what I want. Open it up. We went to the wrong place. It's okay. R O 8. Well, maybe I need 8 and 1. Maybe the Lord just wanted me to get 1. Romans 8 and 1, that we're talking about somebody that need milk instead of meat because they are babe. So they'll quote this scripture. There is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So now we're in the spirit. We don't need the law, which is a damnable lie. I'm going to prove it. It says for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. You see the word, the Bible does not let you know if it's the law of sin and death, the law of righteousness. It just uses the, the Greek word here, nomos. It looks like an in, but it's a new and it's nomos. So this is just law. But see, do you say you're not under the law of the spirit of life? So we need to be wise. So it says, well, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. That's the law we're not supposed to be under. And there's some other ceremony, but we're not talking about that now. Verse three, but what the law could not do, and it was weak through the flesh, not that it was weak through God. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Watch this that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. God's desire, God's command, God's thing for us is that the righteousness of the law be fulfilled in us. They're telling us, he's going to tell those people, we're not under law, but under grace. But that's a goddamnable stinking lie. Tim, why you say it's so hard? Because it is so hard. It is so bad that a person would say that to people. It is so bad that the Bible tells us the righteousness of the law to be fulfilled in us. And they're telling you that you don't have to worry about it. But look at what the Bible says. I got to, I got to keep it short now. It's, it's hard because when they lie, they lie in layers. Hebrews 8 and 8, he's quoting from Jeremiah 31 for finding fault 31 and 31 for those that those that don't know don't know the uh, Jeremiah, but finding fault with them, he says, "Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, and it's not going to be with the tithe in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. What tithe did he give to take them out of Egypt? You're a liar." But because they continued not in my word, and I regarded them not. For this, verse 10, is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my laws in their mind and write them in their heart and will be a God to them, and they shall be to me a people. Why is he writing in my heart? Why is he writing in my mind if I'm not under it? The Bible says, and God means it. He always says what he means. He does not play. He knows what he's talking about. And when the individual tell you something like that, that you're not under the law, but you're under grace, and that you don't have to fulfill the law, what they end up telling you, you're going to be the kind of person that he said will come to him in the last days and say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in your name cast out devils. And in your name did many wonderful works, and I will profess to them, depart from me. I never knew you. You work iniquity. Is that Matthew 21 or 23, Gary? I think it's Matthew 7 and 21. Let me see. Because I was thinking that Sermon on the Mount. I hope you're right, because all I want to do is find it. 
Hey, you're writing them wrong. Not everyone that said to me, but notice, he says, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Now watch what I do on this screen. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to take it to this Bible, paste it. And because I put it in this Bible and I have it keyed to the ESV, ESV says, I will declare unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are workers of not being under the law. You are workers of lawlessness. I'm going to tell people they're not under the law. So to, to continually finish your thing, how we, oh, I, I, I don't know why I went to the dumb dogs that won't bark. Yeah, I knew I, I want to talk about that later, but I won't talk about it right now. It says what I was talking about in Hebrews chapter five. I got to go back one more. Don't make me retype it. Guess I have to. Hebrews five and one, two. I think if you all can see my computer, what ends up happening is it has to update so many days and I should have updated because it puts downloads of new things in it. And so I don't know next time to do that. So it, we talked about when you ought to be teachers and you need someone to teach you, you need milk. For everyone that use milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. See, when you start telling people they don't have to follow God's righteousness, his law is written in your heart for no reason. He said, you're a baby. Strong meat belongs to them who are full age, the word here, teleos, that's mature, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to be to discern between good and evil. So uh, did that help any or do I need to go and show Solomon and say, I don't know how to discern between good and evil because I'm young. Help me mature. No, that, was, that was good. Um, I, I wanted that explanation for posterity. In case someone's listening, because I, I just don't, I try not, I'm, I can assume some things, but when I'm listening, sometimes I'm like, okay, how might someone hear that? So that's good. I hadn't, I hadn't heard what he had said that if you need to pay the tithe, you wouldn't go to heaven. I, I, I hadn't heard that. I mean, Gary, I used to live in a place off of Baker Road in Atlanta. And, and I remember that a preacher, that was that was laying up with somebody he shouldn't have been laying up with. He used to go and pay tithes and he would swear that he was under the covenant and that I should have been inferior to him. And he was so far outside of God's will. God, God eventually killed him though. Uh, he had done some things to hurt a woman that was really nice to children. You know, like some people take in foster children, let yeah. them get molested. And, and the biggest thing is that they get in a check. Yeah, I didn't see that in her. But he fleeced that woman. That preacher fleeced that woman. She almost lost everything that she had because of him. He didn't like Tim. I was scared. Yep. He went when, I, when I was watching this earlier today, uh -huh. I was I kept wanting to see if he was going to say he was going to pay these people, pay these people back. And uh, it was just several things. I was like, wow, and and this is supposed to be repenting. He he was he was still controlling, still controlling. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that most people don't realize that it's necessary to do that. Let me show you Matthew 3 and 3. When John the Baptist came, they said, this is he that was spoken of the prophet side. He's talking about Christ. I mean, they're talking about John, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And it tells you how he was dressed. And then listen to his first beautiful message. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, old generation of snakes, old generation of vipers, old generation of serpents who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. In other words, you're guilty of something. You are guilty. You are condemned right now. But notice what he says. Bring forth, bring forth, therefore, mm -hmm. fruits, meat or suitable for repentance. Let me see. Where my ESV? I don't see it. I'm not going to hunt it. In other words, you don't just apologize. Yep. This is not the Anita Baker show. I apologize. Oh, believe me, I do. No. He says, bring forth, therefore, fruits suitable for repentance. And don't go tell me about your genealogy. He said, God will raise up stones to Abraham. Now, the fruits that are meet for repentance in Leviticus chapter one through seven. 
This is why I have problem with the white evangelical church. This is why I have problem with evangelical Christianity. This is why I will not follow evangelical Christianity. Give me the Hebrew scriptures. Give me the Greek scriptures that have the Hebrew tent on it and give me that butt naked word of God. Give me that which is in the middle of the Testaments and give me the history and y'all can keep Western Christianity that will never make you do and bring forth fruits. Ready you have for a hand. Huh? I, I'm I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you you have a hand. I think someone wanting to say something. Let me look and see if I can see it on my Kindred. Uh, let me go back to Zoom. I, I think it might be your lovely wife. I don't see. Um, let me. I got to come out of this Zoom to do that. I'll get out in a minute, Andrea. You know, you know, I'm older than you. You know, I'm older than you. you know how to do stuff quicker. Why you laugh, Gary? It's true. <laughs> Oh, that's Marsha laughing at me. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 that wasn't me. That oh, was me too. You were laughing earlier. My, <laughs> own, my, own, my own brother laughing yeah. at me. All right, now I'm back. I um, Marsha, if you you look, we argue enough to know I ain't that touchy. Okay, so uh Mm -hmm. it's just that in the process, it's like, they, crazy. they are okay, I think that God said he sent a strong delusion <laughs> I don't oh, did man. somebody put a hand I don't see a hand I don't see anything in the chat so maybe you were wrong, Gary, but I still love you since you're my brother. Yeah. Yes. I think Gary said something about, and you responded, because I got the front mic here on it. In regards to, see, I've heard on many occasions where tithing has been attached to salvation, where tithing has been attached to even getting to, getting to heaven. And so they're often they've used every trick to oppress, suppress, depress in order to gain power and control through the teaching of tithing. And what? well, and this is why because but but see for the most part church church history is irrelevant or important, and even church history would dispel the teaching on tithing until the evangelicals grab hold of it. Explain, please. Okay. It's only when, because when you look at church history, um, you find out that only once Constantine comes on on the scene, now, as a result of Catholicism, it's always been about in the that, that they begin to teach tithing, though they many did not, many of the early church fathers did not agree. Mm -hmm. right? Now, we, we can move to the uh, Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther never embraced tithing, Spurgeon never embraced tithing, but once Spurgeon died, then the begin the, then there's a shift. It becomes a shift. But but prior to that, let me go all the way back in Catholicism, uh, they begin to use tithing as to do it even as a command in order to get to, to squeeze financial contributions through whatever trickery that was at their disposal. You're and we right. Can find that in church history. You're right, Marshall, because that's why they split. Johann Tetzel, yes. and, and that's when Martin Luther left. I, I remember that. Go ahead. So, so it's only been over the last really 120 years that gradually 
It was the white evangelicals that snatched and, 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 and made it uh, a proponent of the law as a requirement. Uh, and, and along the way, I've always said, when I was in law enforcement, one of the things I said, we sat up at night while everybody else was asleep trying to figure out not to how to outsmart you, but to become so much smarter than you. And often I've said that many preachers and pastors and whoever you want to call they had to literally sit up many a night in an attempt to twist the word of God just to get what's in your pocket to oppress you, suppress you through money. Through the time. Who teach false teaching the first fruit? You know, through false teaching the sowing seed. Yes. And so I've often said that this is why in the eight, uh, 40 years ago, they pimped, they pimped Frederick Price to such a degree that he, that he became the greatest attraction long before Dollar ever showed up. That's true. But, of but increasing see, faith. But after, right, but after, but after Frederick fell out of grace with them, then the next biggest player on the scene was Crapolo. So, and it's amazing how God will use the very thing that you thought that built you up to bring you down. Man, that's good stuff. <clears throat> because before Frederick died, I didn't even know he had started teaching the truth about our history. I had no idea. But uh, the Absolutely. thing, but when you brought it about the Catholic Church, when they were building what is called St. Peter's Basilica that you can see inside of it when they do their, their biggest day, their Christmas day, and you had that man walking around with that little baby, that little naked baby on there, and they're burning stuff, carrying incense, and they go, look, 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 look. And he said that that's St. Peter's Basilica with all that gold in there and as big as it is uh -huh. and the walls in there. And then they have their own army. And so he, Johann Tetzel made a ditty that when the moment your coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. So he was, they were selling that people could come away from being burned yeah. in hell. And they can, yes, and that's the next one. Yeah. And then yeah. they sold that. And what about the scapula, baby? They were selling scapulas and say that if you wear this on your body at the time of your death, you will immediately be sent into paradise. You would escape purgatory. So they were selling salvation through yeah. indulgences. You can buy an indulgences. Uh -huh. Before you even commit to crime, you're going to buy the indulgence because you want to rape a woman. Right. And you want to commit sodomy. Whatever you want to do, you can go and you can buy an indulgence and you can do that. And this is how they built the Catholic Church. And these are the things that have been brought down to us, sent down, promulgated in our seminaries and taught to us because. We had absolutely no control over what we were taught here in our captivity. And right. everywhere we are in our captivity, we had no control over it. We were at the mercy. And, and I use that word loosely because most of the time they didn't have mercy. But we were at the mercy of our captives. And what they taught us, we learned. What they taught us, it's like, okay, they gave us a slave Bible. We're going to take out certain books, a lot of the books, anything that may have looked to you to be familiar to you in your spirit, anything that looked to you to, to, to show you that you can be redeemed, that show you that God cared about you, that he cared about the oppressed, that if you just cry out, those things were taken out. And we were taught something else. 
And I don't want to take over the conversation. I just want to add that. Sometimes I'm gonna be quiet and let you all hear. Sometimes a melodious female voice, it just it just <laughs> it, it adds a nice aroma, doesn't it, Marshall? Especially uh, if there's wisdom uh, coming out I mean, of it. Uh, you got him. I mean. It's interesting because we can wrap this up and not wrap it all the way, but in covetousness. Uh -huh. That covetousness and, and the commandments, they cover all that stuff. And it's it's just really sad because you can see the absence of love. You know, Jesus told him, he said, you, you circumnavigate, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but you know where I'm coming from. You cross the globe to proselytize one and make them twofold. Is it twofold a child of hell? It's just bad. I, I don't, I, I'm, is that Matthew 21? I don't, I don't remember what that is. Um, I'm listening. I, I would just, I would, it, I'm oh, just yeah, listening. oh, you're talking about, yeah, you when you go around the world and make a proselyte, and then he said, you make them twofold a child of hell as you are. He yeah. Didn't leave it blank. He, he, didn't, he didn't leave it in the generic. He yeah. Said, as you just, are. Just, in oh, your so brain. much covetousness that, I mean, you, you don't, you, you just kill anybody. You, I mean, you're really killing. You're killing. You know, um, it, it's it's interesting, and and I like hearing y'all bring some of that history now because it's been a minute since I've heard heard it. So it took it took me a minute to get on page with Marshall, but uh, I was glad I was glad that he brought it there because uh, I've been I've been telling him for the longest, you know, the things that he studied. And by the way, when I say Marshall, that's because he's my friend, but. He he probably never tell you Dr. Marshall, because I ain't calling him that all the time. I didn't do it when we were young. Every <laughs> now and then I acknowledge that he paid his dues. But like an old woman say, you still my baby. That's that, that's the way and do I that's the way and do our son. You still you still you still my baby. That was Absolutely. Look, Absolutely. Marshall, young man graduated already from co college, got his summa, already got his professional, two professions in one place. You know what they call one of those people that save people's lives. He's still her baby. Go ahead, I got Marshall. this important call from this old man. I got to get. All right, go I got on. to get what you can do. You, you, on this call. you, you can call, but, but you can call back, back in. And, get back in with it. All right, okay. grace and peace. Right. Yeah, Gary, he called in from his job working. Mm. But this is the thing. Do we care? Do we care? Not so, only did the Catholic Church do that, Gary, they sold us. They actually, they split the world in 1493 after their boy Columbus came back and they gave half to Portugal and gave half to Spain. And they did that with those European countries. And then they gave them the doctrine of discovery to go and conquer the world for the Catholic church, get their gold, get their silver, get their resources, baptize them into the name of the church. And if they don't, they're savages. And whatever you have to do to them, you do them. Just bring us the wealth. Am I lying, Ann? You're not. And and I and there's a there's something that we need to see is because we need to understand the importance of the prophets. We need to understand that they brought awareness to us. Awareness not of the, not just of the evil of the nations around us, but our own wickedness and how we've walked away. The prophets brought awareness. And if we can't take one without the other, we can't see our own wickedness and we're going to, you know, dismiss the other. We're not going to see the, the wickedness of the nations around us. We can't, we, we can't do one without the other. We can't see the wickedness of the nations and not see how it is affected us. Amen. They came and brought awareness to the people. And it's God's awareness. He said, you better wake up. You better see me. You've forgotten me. This is how you left me. And this is what has happened to you. And he says it over and over and over again. How many times do we have to hear it? How many times do we dismiss it? He's telling us something. He's telling you to never forget. These are my ways. These are my 
this is my desire in the earth that I created, in the creation that I created. Amen. This is my will. And he's speaking to us and he's saying, you better come back. You better cry out. And many of us don't think back to this. Many times the deliverance came for our people because they cried out. Yes. His eye laid a, a, a letter down and said, God, can you see it? Can you read it? The children of Israel in Egypt, and they cried out, and he said, I came to save. Yes, Lord. They cried out. We got to learn how to cry out again. People telling us that, you know, well, you know, the white people got militia and they got guns and it's hopeless for you and they got all control of all your food and they got control of all the water. And it's like they had that in Egypt, but we got out. See? And we, and look, and we won. He is a deliverer and he does it in such a mighty way that you better take notice. You can't do anything but take notice. And it's like, when you at your lowest point, and it's like, well, I can't get enough ammunition. I, got, I can't get enough guns. I, this way I, I live. It's, it's, it's the laws that they just passed. You don't think they had, said, had the same thing in Egypt? You don't think they had the same thing in Babylon? And he delivered. We got to learn how to cry out. They kept us from crying out. As long as you tell us, don't look back in those books. Don't you read that Old Testament. That's your history. It is. We better learn it and we better know it. That's your history of deliverance. When we talk about American history, we talking about the history of your oppression. Yes. And then he steps in and you know, that we weren't like they were beating us and hanging us up and doing stuff to us. We don't even count that as a deliverance. We don't. We're like, oh, the, the white folks, they just got good at one time and they decided to let us go and glory to some of the good white people. No. The Most High delivered us. The Most High delivered our ancestors. I'm sure the people in Egypt had a whole story about yeah, where you just we just we just decided to let them go. That's not what happened. Nope. That's, they say you better let these people go because we are ruined because of this. That's what they said. I know I read it. And it was because of his deeds towards us. He really does love us and want to redeem us. But we got to cry out to him. We got to walk with him. We have to hear him. We have to obey him. We have to have a heart towards him. Because we think if we work enough hours, we can buy enough guns and some ammunition and, 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 and we can go on some vacations and do some stuff and, and we can have some peace of our own. Ain't no peace. There is no peace. Save my God to the wicked. wicked. For real. And you are surrounded by the wicked. Now they even come at, they even come in our house on TV, video, our phone, and entertain us with teaching us to do more and more rebellion. And they don't want to send these preachers in there. These preachers wouldn't have got as big yeah. if they wasn't sending them to our house. And when you're tired, they're on 24 hours a day and send your money to TV and we're going to send you a little fake angel. And, 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 uh, it's like they used to give yeah, marching yeah, orders. Huh? I was just saying, of course, they're going to make, you know, the resident minister and all the face of the oppression, the, the face of, Stealing and mocking God and, and robbing people. He learned that. He did. He got, he got some overseers. He does. We need to really see our the overseers. He said he 
he went so long and he tries to Kenneth Copeland. Who yeah. taught him this mess? And what's Kenneth Copeland's word? Glory to God. Yep. He ain't no free Negro out here doing this. He ain't free out here doing this. And then he you... has some overlords. Yes. He always would, had some masters over him. Like, like they say, he was able to, like people say, you were able to come up who you know, what you're willing yes. to do. Yes. What you're willing to do. But they want us to leave. They want us to just focus in on, on him and, and he's dirty enough on his own. But somebody told him this man. I hope I was clear in showing that, that it ain't all him. I hope I was clear because that's the truth. And most of us, we got we got our stuff from somebody until we go back and deprogram ourselves with the programming of the ones whose thoughts are not our thoughts and whose ways are not our ways. And then when we hear him, we can stop hearing other people's chatter. And, and if it goes back to what I said to my other pastor Gary when he talked about on Thursday, last Thursday, he, talk, he talked from Acts chapter 2. And it says that they continue in the apostles' doctrine. Mm. And I said, they can scratch that out of the Bible, tear that verse out, and put it in there, and they continue in the cogent God doctrine. Yes. Church of God in Christ doctrine. The Church of God, Holiness USA doctrine, the Mormon doctrine, the Jehovah's Witness doctrine. They can you can cut that out and put that there because that is the problem. Protestant, I don't care if you say you Lutheran, and you contend in the Lutheran doctrine. Protestant doctrine, whatever it is. The apostles get left out because these churches have established, and they all white because white folks was over America. They are. They are over are. every major religion. You better believe it. You better see it. You better understand it. And it's to exclude your black behind. It's yes. to make you inferior. Yes. Like Sojourner Truth said, when for her name was changed. When I saw when I saw this white man, he had a beard, and I thought he, I thought he was Jesus because during that time, when the ACS started putting out those pamphlets, they made sure that they made him look just like them. And when she realized the truth, she changed her name. My my name is Sojourner, and she said, "I want a last name like everybody else." Truth. Your message was really good because well, thank you. Just going back through the scriptures and seeing certain things. This I I can't find my notebook right now, but I wrote down a lot of stuff, but it was really good. It was really good. Well, I'll say something that I didn't say, and you can find it if you'd like. And I think it's imperative <clears throat> because people will say, Well, he said he saw he say no, he did say he was sorry. He said he was wrong. So let's look and see. Just like but when you, I you know, he also said that he had done some corrective teaching in the last 10 years. But if you see how he said it, he said it like a fleeting thought, like, oh yeah, I did a little bit of correcting in the last 10 years. Did you remember that part? Yeah, but it, and he also went back and still asked for the money in a different way. Yeah. That's just like me telling Andrina, you know, well, you know, I ain't got I I, I don't have a girlfriend. I don't so and so and so. I done stop and she said, okay, I forgive you. But instead of not having to call her a girlfriend, I, I just I just call her, you know, um, my buddy. Just change yeah. the word. Just <clears throat> change the word. But look, at, the look word. at this in Matthew 5 23. Now, Zach, now, 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 let's look at another one too before we do this, because I want to show you how a man that's really touched by the Most High God acts 
when he really does find a salvation. If the Bible is to be prescriptive, if the Bible is to be descriptive, if God has spoken, and if this is historical and theological, then what I should do is look at a man that say he's repented, a man that said that he is now doing, going to do better, although this is not the first time he said it. Benny Hinn did the same thing after he had fleeced and got all his money from people about, oh, let's bear that, oh, let's... But the Bible says, and Jesus entered and passed into Jericho, Luke 19 and 1. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was a pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste. Make haste, come down, for today I must abide at your house. And he made haste and came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with the man that is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood. Is this what Creflo did? Now listen. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods will I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, by false witness, by false accusation that the devourer is going to come and eat them up, by false accusation, I'm accusing God that he won't heal you if you don't pay this tithe. I'm accusing God of being so unrighteous that he will not bless your finances unless you pay the tithe. If I have defrauded or taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. I'm going to make restitution. And Jesus said, he didn't say, come and pray. Jesus didn't say, come and apologize. Jesus said unto him, this day, the salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and save that which is lost. I submit to you if I'd have seen something like that. I submit to you. I would have said, you know, the stuff that did it hurt a lot of people. It did a lot of things. But I know Manasseh did worse than that. And he was able to come back to the Lord. But I want you to understand this man, when he talked about restitution, the Lord was pleased. Now let's look at what we're talking about tonight. These preachers that have done that and America that has done the same to us. Jesus says, Matthew 5, 23, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that your brother has ought against you, you think I wouldn't remember that I didn't pay my rent and I got kicked out? You think I wouldn't remember that I was going to get married and I was going to buy this ring? We were going to honeymoon, but you said time is extra and I didn't get to go? You think my wife wouldn't remember? But anyway, it says, and remember that your brother has ought against you. Leave there your gift before the altar and go thy way and be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. I want you to understand, we did this before, but so many people, we don't know these things. How do you get reconciled to your brother? Zacchaeus knew, but where did Zacchaeus get it from? Look at this, 6 and 1 Leviticus. And the Lord and Yahweh spake to Moses, say, if a soul sin and commit a trespass against Yahweh and lie unto his neighbor in that which delivered to him to keep or in fellowship or the thing taken away by violence or has deceived his neighbor, the tithe is the covenant. You want to get healed? Tithe. You want this job? Tithe. You want these bills paid? Throw your money up here. Let us dance on it. You want to get this wife? Tithe. You can get nothing from God unless you tithe. Your tithe is a connection to God. That's what he said. That's deception. It says, he said, I've taken away anything by violence or have deceived the neighbor. He said he couldn't shoot you. So, you know, anyway. Or have found that which is lost and lieth concerning it and sweareth falsely, false accusation. And any of these things that a man doeth, sinning therein. Then it shall be, because he has sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore. Where does it say that y'all gonna forgive? 
Where does it say y'all going to act like it didn't happen? Where does it say he can continue to get up there and teach and be over you and you not set him down? It says he shall restore that which he took violently away or the thing that he had deceitfully gotten in that was Zacchaeus said or that which delivered unto him to keep or the thing which he lost that was found or all that he has sworn false that hey, you do this, you ain't gonna make your room. You ain't gonna be able to receive it. You, you, gonna be, you, you can get a jet like me. He shall even restore the principle and add the fifth. See, that's what we don't understand. When we supposed to do the righteous judgment of God, when we supposed to rule the land, when we supposed to get out from under the other oppressors, you don't put somebody in jail for stealing. You make them add the pay the principal and add the fifth. You took 50, you took 100, you got 100, what's the fifth? 20. You take a fifth of uh, 50, you take 10. So you give back 60 for 50. Add the fifth part thereunto and give it unto him that it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. Not that you do the offering first, and he shall bring his trespass offering. Say you paying it back first, and he shall bring his trespass offering, trespass offering to Yah, and the ram without blemish out of the flock, which is our estimation for the trespass offering unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him after he has brought forth fruit, meat for repentance. And the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he has done in trespassing therein. This is why I say American Christianity, America as a whole, North America, as that woman called it, Creflo, any other preacher that has done that, and made mockery out of Yah. You want to tell me, can they be saved? Follow Zacchaeus. Follow the right way. Make restitution. Well, I don't know all of the people. You can start figuring out. I'm pretty sure people will let you know. I'm pretty sure there are people that have been hurt to their soul. They can tell you. But remember, if you got to pay a tithe to get to see him, if you got to be a, pay a tithe to even get to have an audience with him, Things have to change, but that's that's the methodology of reconciliation, not apology. But you got to get down where it hurts. You got to get down. So I don't want what God don't want me to have. I hope that was clear. True restitution, true reconciliation. And Zacchaeus felt it. And Zacchaeus was like, I don't care. I'll give four for one. All I got to do is add a fifth. I'll give four for one. I'll give up the half of my kingdom. And I know I don't owe that much. Jesus said, that, Jesus said that's the real repentance that brings salvation. It's clear. Sir? Nice connection. Thank you. Are we through for tonight, you all? I don't mind. That was a good lesson. Very good. Well, thank you. Um, I'm it, I'm it, so I didn't want to talk about this. I did I not. I think you did. Okay. I, I, you were fired up when you started. <laughs> the wrestler used to say, fired up, Timothy, fired up. Hey. <laughs> I, 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 I was warm, but I wanted to go into, I still want to go into Ecclesiastes because what, what people are going to find out as we go into Ecclesiastes, we're going to find out Solomon did the same thing. Solomon fleeced the people so badly that the kingdom was split because his son, I ain't going to give y'all no restitution. I was I thinking about him, just okay. like you're saying. Yep. And even, I, I was thinking about like Eli's son, just different ones was going through my mind, but I, I felt like I might be going off on a tangent since we're specifically, you know, talking to us. But, um, you know, Samuel told him he's going to take your children. He's going he gonna to take, he, he told them. He told them just like the Lord told the people. And, you know, we, we like Ann said, we better listen and, and, and cry out for it. Don't be pretending to cry out. Don't be pretending. People have been so wicked, ungodly, beating people out of their money, having them to think they're That's super spiritual and got anointing of God when really they got an anointing of their mouth. The anointing of God would make you, it would make you deal with sin, righteousness, and judgment, not trying to get rich, not trying to run people, and not looking big. 
The most high, the most high has spilled it out. He's that beautiful, mom. He's beautiful, but I hug. Well, okay, what what I do? I dare need to come and hug you, make you feel better. <laughs> Gary, your other son. We do. I we. Feel better. We, me and you, we're gonna pray together, okay? Father, I ask you to look upon my mom as I as I sit here right now. And I ask you, I beseech you by your power that you have that you would touch your body now. Not demanding, requesting, you would touch it. You would alleviate the pain and that you would give her comfort. Because I know you can, you've done it many times before. And Father, I ask you that you would look upon her and have mercy on her and Restore all of the things to her that have been taken away, not by the devourer, not by the devil, just the vicissitudes of life, that you would do that for her, for me, and our family. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. You all, you all can talk again. I just didn't want to put it off. I don't know that. The organizer has ended this meeting. Goodbye. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close the meeting, you all. You all keep me in your prayers. May the Most High bless us and keep us. Make his glorious face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. Amen. Amen. And even Amen. so. Amen. Good night, you all.